Amen. Good morning, everyone. Have you heard the one about the top market business person, the aggressive jailer, and the man with a vision who ends up in prison? Well, that's what today's readings and today's sermon is about. And in the modern way, uh, Inga and Shinge have done a fantastic job of telling the story in the modern way in flashback. Because we kind of see the end of the story first with Philippians, and then they pan back and we see the aggressive jailer, and then we start with Lydia, the business person. And that's what we're going to learn about today, because this is the introduction to a new series on Philippians. Philippians is a letter of love. It's written by Paul, inspired by the Holy Spirit. And it shows Paul's love for the Philippian church, and the Philippians church's love for Paul. But most of all, it shows the Father's unconditional love for us as shown through Jesus. And so today we're going to look at Jesus' unconditional and motivational love for all of us. And we're going to see this in three ways. How Jesus loves us where we are, how Jesus loves us whoever we are, and how Jesus' love empowers us wherever we are. But of course, the best way is to say it with flowers. And I've got this little small geranium, sweetened it, okay. Sometimes I think, you know, you think of the person who loves us the most, or the person who has loved us the most, and, you know, that's what I think of, you know, flower, because it just speaks of that. But when we think of God's love, God's love is so much bigger. Okay? God's love is so much bigger. Jesus' love for us is bigger than we can imagine. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for bringing us all together today, in person or on um, YouTube and in St. Paul's. And I just ask, Lord, that you would reveal to us today through what I say, through our worship, through everything that happens today where we are, that we would just know deep down your unconditional love for us. Amen. So the first thing then is if we're going to understand Philippians, how did this church start? Well, we we saw with the, the, the last passage that Paul goes to Philippi. This is a, a little, uh, well, it's, not, it's actually, it was in those days, a very important town in northern Greece. Paul is traveling around and he's strengthening the churches that he set up. And he, he wants to go to some new places, but the timing isn't right yet. And we know that because the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of Jesus, prevents them from going there. And then he gets a vision. And the person from the northern Greece appears to him and says, come and help us. Come and help us. And it's wonderful how God's timing can help us. It's so important. And, and you know, when we, we, when we try and do things, we, face, we can face opposition. Or we can, God can be sort of uh, guiding us and saying, no, it's not the right time for that. Uh, yesterday I was helping at a a conference, I was selling books for a group that works in Southeast Asia. Uh, I did have a bit of opposition because I misread the sat-nav and did 10 miles down the M25 and then did another 10 miles back. The M25 looks really beautiful at this time of year, lots of trees, grass, <laughs> that sort of stuff. You can really enjoy the scenery as you zoom by. Okay? Now, I don't think that was really God trying to say, don't go to the conference. I feel that was a, a bit of opposition there, okay? But it's, it's important to try and discern, you know, what is actually going on. And um, so Paul gets this call to, to Philippi, and he, he looks for people who are seeking after God. 
Because Paul usually starts off with talking to people who, who have a heart for God. He starts with sort of um, people who, who will be sympathetic, first of all, hopefully, to his message. And he, the first people he meets are outside the city, and he meets Lydia, who is a trader in purple cloth. Now, purple cloth in those days was used for royalty. It was the Harrods of the business world, the really top-end market. And, note, and, and this is the first person that Paul meets, that chats to, who accepts his message, Lydia. Notice how the Bible acknowledges and empowers women. The Bible acknowledges and empowers women. Lydia is not the only account in the Bible. And the Bible is written in a time, a male-dominated society. Roman times at the time of Paul, the Old Testament times and so on. And repeatedly, God puts in his word... The accounts, stories, events that acknowledge and empower women. And, this, and then so she accepts Jesus. And then there's this really important Bible verse here. When she and the members of her household were baptised, she invited us to her home. If you consider me a believer in the Lord, she said, come and stay at my house. And she persuaded us. Now, notice how Paul acknowledged her faith and empowered her by accepting her gift of hospitality. It's important in demonstrating love. You know, we give a gift, we do something for someone, that's a demonstration of love. Sometimes accepting a gift or accepting hospitality or accepting an offer is also a demonstration of love. It was really important here that Paul accepted Lydia's offer of hospitality to affirm her faith. And it happens to us, doesn't it? People give us compliments. You know? and, I, and we're very so tempted, so, oh, it's nothing. Nah, it's not really. It's not nothing. If we do something, if people compliment us, if they thank us, if they appreciate something we've done, then I acknowledge them and just say, well, thank you for your encouragement. Uh, don't go the other way, you know. Well, it's fine, of course. Okay. But, you know, humbly accept the encouragement. So people will keep on doing it. People want to be acknowledged. You know, they've recognised something. That is a gift of God. Acknowledge the gift of God. Thank you for your encouragement. And um, so we've seen there that Jesus loves us where we are. He showed love to Lydia where she was, in her work, in her business, in seeking after God. And Jesus wants to show, shows his love to us where we are, in our homes, when we go out shopping, when we're at work. We're called to, um, we are called, you know, Jesus wants to show, demonstrate love to them, wants us to show his love to the people around us, where we are, at home, in the businesses, in shops. That's why I go around, as, as Heather's outlined. It's not about talking about the gospel, it's about being the gospel. You know, we, the Holy Spirit is in us. So, it's, it, we, we, you know, through us, Jesus can demonstrate his love, his unconditional love, to people where they are, and acknowledge and affirm them, and that they know that they are loved. Then we meet the second character, the middle passage, the aggressive jailer. So we've met the, the uh, business person. We're now meeting the aggressive jailer. And there's a bit happens after Lydia, um, which you can read about in Acts chapter 16. And Paul is imprisoned on trumped-up charges. He's arrested, he shouldn't be there. And, and they say to the jailer, um, make sure you really look after these people. He really goes over the top. He puts him in the innermost dungeon. That's probably pretty deep. That's probably pretty dark and so on. And he locks them in the stocks. Now, it's difficult for us to understand stocks. I looked it up on the internet and um, directed to the stock exchange by Google. 
Okay, I don't think that's what <laughs> really meant here. Just as well, it might have been marketing a few investments here, but instead of focusing on the, on the Word of God. But, um, but the stocks were things which were, you, you've seen them sometimes when you go out to, to villages and places where they sort of put the feet in. But these were like iron chains, which were really painful. They were used for torture. He's really going into them. And these are innocent people. But notice how they react. Paul and Silas are singing hymns and praying in very difficult circumstances. I'm not sure I'm quite there yet. But it's interesting, isn't it, that how the, it says the other prisoners were listening. And Jesus can use us in difficult circumstances to demonstrate his love. I, I was thinking that, that, that we, 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 we've been singing about miracles and we've been praying about miracles, and that is right. But miracles can happen everywhere. The two of the biggest miracles for me are when, first of all, when God gives us the love for someone when we don't feel like it. God helps us to do an act of kindness or do something caring for someone, A, when we don't feel about it, when we don't feel like it, and B, when they don't seem particularly loving or they're not being nice or kind to us. You know, it, we, we talk about loving enemies. It's not easy. But that is a miracle, isn't it? When God gives us love for someone that when we don't feel like it and they're not being very loving to us. Uh, I think I may have mentioned the story of, of when uh, my boss was getting rid of me and uh, I had this amazing book. I was given this gift of an amazing book. It had a, a silk copy in it of a painting which is about 300, sorry, 300 meters long. And this beautiful, you open the book and this painting comes out in front of you. And God said to me, give it to your boss. What? Okay, okay. And I, on my leaving day, I presented her with this book. And suddenly this kind of wave of forgiveness or release or whatever came over me from the spirit. But that is, the, for me, the first miracle, to be able to lush, demonstrate care, kindness, compassion for, for in, a, in situations where it doesn't feel like it. And the second thing is, we're all miracles, being here, watching at home, watching in St. Paul's, because we're still hanging on to Jesus despite whatever we're going through. Heather mentioned about, you know, we're, we're all facing, we, all fa we have faced, we are facing difficult circumstances. But we're all hanging on to Jesus. We're all holding on to his hand. Tightly, very tightly. Maybe it's not as tight as we'd like. But we're still, that is a miracle, isn't it? That we're all hanging on to Jesus' love. But for sometimes... God does these absolutely amazing things. And that's what he does for the jailer. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and felt, oh, there was a, sorry, there's this big earthquake. God sends an earthquake. Why does he send the earthquake? The prisoners don't escape. He sends an earthquake to save the jailer. The aggressive, horrible, awful jailer. God sends an earthquake to save him. Wow. That's how much God loves us, isn't it? That's how big God's love is. Someone who, in, who, who in, in his own personal dungeon, you know, he, he's in his own personal dungeon, who's, who's going to reach him? And God has to send an earthquake to rescue him. That's how big God's love is. And the, and the results are, the jailer called for lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And that's God's love for that jailer. And there are other miracles. And I'm going to invite Carol to come up and she's going to testify to something that's happened in her life recently. And uh, are you okay holding the mic, Carol, when I give it to you? Fantastic. Carol's being very brave. Thank you. Go on, Carol. I have a story to tell. Uh, 
Oh. Oh, uh, sorry, I have learning difficulties. I um, wrote, uh, Roman and Matthew were talking about healing. And that Sunday I came to the church, I had pains in both my legs and my lower back, and I was healed. And on two weeks ago, on the Friday night, I went to bed that night, deep sleep, I had this soft voice turn around to me. Carol, you will go to Croydon in the morning. You will not take your walking stick. So I walked all the way around Croydon. I got back on the bus and I came back home and I said, praise me God. Thank you, Carol. Thank you, Carol. So fantastic. That is, God, God loves us. That's, we have witnesses and testimonies about how big God's love is. And if we only feel that love at the moment is this big, remember the times, remember the accounts, remember the stories, read the Bible, about how big God's love actually is, even though we not may feel it. Thank you, Carol. That was very brave of her to come up. And I'm just so thankful. She turned up her coffee shop, because she, she, she she, she's a regular member of our coffee shop, and was coming with, with a stick. And then she turned up one day, and no stick. I thought, ooh. <laughs> so thank you, Carol. So we've seen how Jesus loves us where we are, through Lydia. We've seen how Jesus loves us whoever we are, the aggressive jailer. We're now going to see how Jesus' love empowers us wherever we are. And that's where we come. So we've seen Lydia, the business person. We've seen the aggressive jailer. We're now going to look at the man in a, with a vision who is still now in prison. He, he was imprisoned in Philippi, but he was released. But when he's writing this letter, he's in prison again. And he's not got any signs of being released, unfortunately. He, he possibly facing death, as you will hear from later talks and later passages, he, he's, he's realising that the end may be in sight. And he's in that difficult place, but Jesus' love empowers him. And Jesus' love empowers in two ways. First of all, Jesus' love empowers the church, Lydia, the jailer, the other people in the church, to send him some gifts. You know, Jesus can empower us to demonstrate his love. This, this little one came from this big one, you know? And, you know, Jesus' love can help us to give gifts, share that love to demonstrate his love, yeah? By the way, if anyone feels this plant has spoken to them, uh, please ask me the end, you may take it as a gift, okay? <laughs> Uh, this one, not that one, right? Okay, just <laughs> <laughs> Took me three sessions in the gym this week to lift that one, but there we go. <laughs> God's love is very big. <laughs> okay. And so they send the gifts, and Paul is writing the Philippians letter as a thank you letter. Now that's the second point. If, about the Philippians, is, is if the Philippian church had not offered a gift to Paul, he wouldn't be writing the letter, would he? That bit of the Bible would be missing. Isn't it amazing? We never know what we do, what impact it will have on the people around us. Whatever loving action, whatever we say or do that is loving, that is kind, that demonstrates Jesus' love, we may never know the impact, but it will have an impact. Every loving action, every kind word, Every smile makes a difference. So what can we learn from the introduction to the letter? Well, the first thing is that Jesus is, love, is at the centre of it. Jesus is mentioned seven times in those 11 verses. Seven is the perfect number in the Bible. So let's make sure Jesus is at the centre of everything we do. That's kind of obvious, really, isn't it? 
Let's just, when we, we're setting off, I wish I'd prayed a bit more before I set off down the M25 in the wrong direction. Okay? A learning point for me there. Secondly, Paul is thankful and joyful for his brothers and sisters in Christ. He says, I thank my God every time I remember you. In all my prayers for all of you, I always pray with joy. So when we pray, let us be thankful. Thankful to Jesus for our brothers and sisters. Now, we're thankful for our brothers and sisters here. As I mentioned, we have brothers... uh, I was at a meeting yesterday where we were praying and listening to brothers and sisters who are working in different parts of the world. uh, Southeast Asia, Central Asia, and so on. If you would like... Now, I've got here some book... I've got some other free gifts today. So, you know, that's the plant. I've got a wonderful map. And this map has on it all places in Southeast Asia where different people are working. If you feel called or want to pray for people in different parts of the world, there are obviously, we pray for Ukraine, we pray for other areas, but if you'd like a little map to help you pray, then please take that with you. uh, Come and see me at the end, and I have a few copies. And I also have a little booklet on how to pray for missionaries. So if you're wondering, I wonder how Matthew's doing, I wonder how I can pray for Matthew and Gwen, well, there are missionaries, aren't they, in Thailand? If you take a little leaflet, it gives you insight on how to pray for them. And if you want to know more about praying for people working in different parts of the world, Juliet is our resident expert over in the corner. So please do see Juliet. She can give you various resources and so on. Uh, And if you can't find me, I'll leave these on the front, okay, for you to take, so just help yourself to that. As we don't know who wants the plant, I'll put the plant there as well. (laughs) If you're walking out with that one, I'll stop you, but you can take that one. (laughs) Okay. And then we have, uh, also there are, it's a church, there are different places that we're particularly linked with, and as well as Ukraine, we are also linked with a church in Pakistan. And I hope there are going to be some pictures come up showing the church in Pakistan. Have you got it there? <laughs> Ade. Okay, next one. Yeah. Okay. Next one. Next one. Okay. Anyway, we've got this church in Pakistan, okay, uh, done by Pastor Zisha. And we have links with that. Matthew met Pastor Zisha when he was on a visit in Penj High Street. He just happened to bump into him. And we now continue uh, to link with them Uh, We support them as a church. And as you can see, they're a pretty joyful church. It's really good to pray for them. We can pray for them with joy because they're a pretty joyful lot. Okay, there they are preaching outside. We've got the children's ministry. We've got the um, we've got the Mother's Day, okay? So they're celebrating Mother's Day. And they're also called by God to, to extend the building. So they built a conference hall and offices and stuff like that to add to their church. And we have supported them building their church. They now want to raise the roof, literally, because they haven't got the money for the roof. So if you feel called to contribute to raising the roof in Pakistan, see me afterwards and we can sort something out. But that's where they are at the moment. Lord Jesus, I just thank you, Lord, for Pastor Zishan's church. I just thank you, Lord, for his call and Lord, and, and the way you are blessing and working through him and all the children's work and the, and the outreach and the missions and the, and the way you are using him and that church to really bless that area. And I just pray you would pour your Holy Spirit upon them, Lord, that they would have a fresh anointing from you, that you would provide the, the roof that they need for this particular part, Lord, of their church, but that there would be no roof, no barriers to the way you are working through them in that part of Pakistan, in Lahore. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, thank you. Now, the third thing that we can learn, so we've learnt uh, about Jesus at the centre, Paul prays with joy. We've thirdly learnt that uh, we have a goal and purpose, which kind of ties in with this Ruth thing, because there's a verse, it's one of the verses Paul writes, he says, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. 
That is fantastic, isn't it? We have a goal and purpose in life, wherever we are. And if we feel we've done the goal and purpose, there's still another one to do. And we are sure that however we feel, whatever we're going through, Jesus is going to bring it to completion until the day we are with him or until the day he comes back again. We, you know, Jesus is going to finish it out, okay? We used to wake up in the morning to a little cassette player. Yes, for those of you, they, they were cassettes. They, they may be on a resurgence, okay? Uh, this one did very well till it broke. The, um, but there was a song, and it said, being come to this, that he who began a good work in you will come to completion to Christ Jesus. And we used to play it every morning. And it's kind of encouraging when you do that. Okay, try and, there's, 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 if you want a memory verse... You know, put that in the mind. It'll, it'll support you through the difficult times. And Jesus will complete the work he has started us because he loves us. And we are a work in progress, aren't we? So, since we are a work in progress, let's never judge other people who are a work in progress. It's very, the Bible says humans look on the outside, but Jesus sees the heart. And that is the most important bit. So let us pray for us that, that, that Jesus' love empowers us wherever we are to love those he puts in our path and to help us see them through the eyes of Jesus. Okay? Helpful comments and criticisms are not really loving. If I kept criticising this plant, okay, and having a go at it about how small it is, and didn't bother to water it with compliments, or to feed it with um, encouraging words, it wouldn't grow to be like that, would it? Okay. If we want people to grow, we have to feed them with encouragement, and we have to com- you know we have to support them and encourage them. Remember, if you then. If you point the finger at someone, it's an old thing, there are three fingers pointing back at you. So always remember to look for the good, to look where Jesus is working in that person. And if they don't do that to you, well, that's, uh, you know, if you're thinking people are being critical towards you, well, shields up, Jesus loves me. Okay, the shield of faith protects us from the flaming niggly bits from the enemy. Okay. So, we have learned that Jesus loves us, okay? He loves us where we are. He loves us whoever we are. And Jesus' love can empower us to love with his love wherever we are. But finally, Paul prays something else, doesn't he? He says, he prays that your love may abound. Your love, he prays for the church, your love, our love, may abound more in knowledge and depth of insight so you may be able to discern what is best. For me, knowledge and depth of insight is two things, okay? It's knowledge and depth of insight of Jesus. So the more we learn about Jesus through prayer, through reading the Bible, through meeting together to study uh, God's word in the Bible study or in a home group. So the more we meet together to chat and pray about things in triplets or in coffee shop or in all the other amazing things, in revival prayer, all the other different things we do that Heather mentioned, which are in the bulletin, those opportunities, the more we will love like Jesus because we will know and understand how Jesus loves but also it's depth and insight of each other. I find it wonderful when people offer me a cup of coffee, but if they put sugar in it, that's not showing knowledge and depth of insight and a little off-putting. Okay? Uh, It's not knowledge and depth of insight being loving, offering a biscuit to someone when it needs to be gluten-free. We need knowledge and depth of insight to know how to love people and to understand them. And that's again why we have the church today, 
Bible study, revival prayer, coffee shop, car wash, small groups, triplets, all the other amazing things, so we can learn about each other, so we have knowledge and depth of insight about each other, so we can understand each other and the way we work, so that we can love each other and be loving in what we do. And the overall aim in doing this is that we demonstrate in a small way the amazing, fantastic, wonderful love of Jesus. So Jesus loves us where we are, loves us whoever we are, and Jesus' love empowers us wherever we are. And and Jesus' unconditional love is so much bigger than we imagine. A million, 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 million times bigger. Now, if you can't quite remember that and want to grow a geranium to do it, you can do it. It takes a little while. But there is a simple way you can do it. Every time you pick up a pencil. Now, me being a, a chemistry teacher, okay, knows that the, the, uh, the carbon going down the middle, that amount, in, in that pencil... I know that there's a million, million, million atoms. Give or take a few. So every time you see a pen or a pencil, just remember all the million, 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 million atoms in there. And God loves us million, 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 million times more than we can imagine. Amen. Let's say a prayer together. So there should be a final prayer coming up on the screen, which is the prayer of Paul. Let's say this together. May our love abound more and more in knowledge and depth of insight, so that we may discern what is best and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ. 